Welcome to church. Father, we've come to join our hearts with yours, to cry out in unity with the goodness of what you're doing in our lives, Lord. All over this world, Lord God, you are in control, Lord. We're just here to give you glory for that, Lord, to recognize all that you're doing, Lord God. Come, Holy Spirit, and meet with us, Lord God. I give you glory for all you brought me through. Now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. I'm moving forward to follow after you. And now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. Your presence is an open door. We want you.
no weapon formed against me is gonna prosper no plan of the enemy will stand no giant will defeat me i will believe that in the lord i'll take the land no weapon no weapon formed against me is gonna prosper
Good morning on this beautiful Sunday morning. We want to keep our eyes on the Lord and our eyes should be fixed on Him. All around us there are things that are creating chaos, but the Lord is our Savior. The Lord is our strength. The Lord is our healer. So no matter what your day may involve right now, let's get our eyes on the Lord and what He has for each of us. Let's join together in prayer. Father, we are together with you this day. We're in the house of the Lord. That's the first time we've been able to do this for months, and thank you for this. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that this day your peace will fill our hearts, your direction and purpose would be within us, 
And may we have in our minds and our understanding and knowledge of the will of God and may it be accomplished for the purposes of God to be fulfilled. We come and ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we can't do it our own. We ask for the empowerment of your Holy Spirit in each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church family. Today's scripture comes to us from Romans 10, verses 8 to 13. I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Good morning, so glad you're watching. If you haven't heard yet, we just started doing in-person, in the sanctuary services again. So that's very exciting. Chairs are spaced out and we're gonna wear our masks but we're gonna do our in-person, in the sanctuary services. So every Sunday at 10.30 a.m., as long as our regulations allow us to do that, there's gonna be kids component in the service, so it's gonna be fun for the whole family, as well as the option of doing kids Sunday school on Sunday morning. So children will have a time in the service where they're dismissed to go to the lower level with Pastor Kathy and her other leaders. So that's gonna be a blessing. We hope that we can see you there and that you can bring the whole family. It's gonna be wonderful. I wanted to let you know that we're also continuing with our online services. So if you're not comfortable meeting in person yet, that's totally okay. We wanna keep going forward with these services like the one you're watching right now. So the online services are continuing to be released at 9.15 a.m., 11 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. And this month, for the next few weeks, Pastor Paul is gonna be doing a special message at the 6.30 p.m. online service. He's gonna do a series called Conversations on the End Times. So that's gonna be really interesting and we hope it's a, a real blessing to you. He's also going to be releasing short video devotionals um, for you in the mornings on Facebook and on YouTube. So many people loved it when he was doing that a little bit earlier in this uh, pandemic season. And so we're gonna bring those back and we're hoping that there'll be a real strength and encouragement to you in your walk of faith during this time. So thanks for listening to the announcements. I hope you enjoy the rest of the service and God bless you. Hi everyone, it's so special to be with you today. If you're watching online, I believe that God has a purpose for us today and for you and your heart and that all that you're gonna to hear today, I hope it'll be blessed. I'm preaching very casually. I'm from our auditorium. It's still not quite done, but uh, we are having some seats in here. We can have a certain amount. You can see they're all social distance behind me, different uh, seats, different people. Tomorrow they'll be sitting in here and hopefully uh, we'll have a blessed time in the Lord's house. But today I wanna to bring you a message of hope and faith. We've been talking about faith and hope, some critical things that God wants to instill in your life today. And we've been looking at uh, God's testing when we have to wait for God and we're developing endurance in our life. There's uh, this, uh, series that we've been uh, ministering to in the parking lot and online talking about uh, Abraham and Moses uh, King David and Joseph with the Technicolor dream coat all of them had to endure through one specific thing that we've been looking at is uh, waiting now Moses waited 40 years Abraham waited 25 years from when God gave them a promise to when the promise was fulfilled and each of us waiting is a real difficulty that we face and uh, all the anxiety and the great pressure that we're facing today, this uh, series out of the scripture is really important to get a catch uh, and to see in your mind and in your heart that your, your life, you're alive right now, even if you're waiting, it doesn't mean you've made some terrible mistake if all the promises of God haven't come through instantly, especially in COVID. Each one of these people that we looked at in the Bible, Hebrews chapter 11 gives lists of people they had to wait and for Abraham, it was just waiting was the test. He didn't even do anything at really what we would call amazing. Uh, he didn't make some great big monument or anything. He just waited and he was patient and he endured and he hoped in the Lord in faith. So 
if we want to look today at these two topics, it's fair. This, there's something in this message today which is like, to me, a huge thing. It's a huge deal for you. I think it's going to be a huge deal and in part, and I really mean this, I'm not trying to bait you with something. I mean it. We're going to talk about faith and hope today. There's an important distinction that we need to realize when we're dealing with faith and hope when we look at it in the Bible. And this uh, distinction, if we don't understand it, it really leads to frustration. Many people think they have faith, but they actually have hope. And the results that are promised to faith are not promised to hope. It's not that there's anything wrong with hope and you don't need hope, but it's just if you think you have faith and you have hope, those results that we're looking for uh, that are promised to faith, the results promised won't happen if you have hope. So. Hope in the scripture, and we're going to define these and look at them for a minute. Hope in the scripture, in a good sense, is what we would call a steady, continuing expectation of good from God. It is not wishful thinking. That's important to render that. In the scripture is not wishful thinking. Hope is not wishful thinking. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 says, Now... Or sorry, but now abide faith, hope, and love, these three. So the three big things that abide in our hearts and in our lives from the Lord are faith, hope, and love. Two of them that we're talking about today, it's really important to see they are definitely distinct. And they apply and impact your life in critical and huge ways. And in COVID and in what's going on in the world right now, we really need to get into this to see how each one can bless you in an individual way, you can be blessed from faith and hope, but you want to make sure you you realize there's things reserved for faith that aren't going to happen if you have hope, and le and the opposite is also true. So you see then that there's three things, faith, hope, and love that abide, but you also see that faith and hope are interrelated or related. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, it links them together, which is really kind of cool. It says that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So faith is a substance. It's also, you could maybe in a way we would relate to it today, it's an underlying basis. That's what faith is. Now the same word for uh, this word assurance being translated as substance or actually underlying basis, the same word is used in the beginning of Hebrews and the translators say it's underlying basis. So to say that faith is the underlying basis or the substance of things hoped for, that's important to distinction because I think we think that way a bit and the Bible actually translated, translated it that way in Hebrews 11 in the earlier part of Hebrews 11. So all genuine hope, you see the connection here, is based on faith. They're connected. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. So faith and hope are related, yet they're distinct. And you see it right there in that verse. Hopes that are not based on faith are generally falling into the category of wishful thinking. Uh, like uh, in some kind of a kid's song or something. It's just like a fairy tale. It's wishful thinking. So true hope in the biblical sense, when we're talking about what hope is in the Bible, always is based on true faith. But there are two very distinct differences. And let's just, very, I'm going to very casually kind of walk through this. Faith is in the present. Hope is in the future. That's how it plays out in the Bible. And the scriptures say that. That's the first one. Faith is in the present, hope is in the future. And second, faith is in the heart, hope is in the mind. It's really, you don't, it's not that, you know, that's not hard, is it? You don't need to some great talent to hear that and figure that out. That's really simple. Faith is in the present, hope is in the future. And then faith is in the heart, hope is in the mind. Now, this is a little complex because in the, in the original language of Greek, which the New Testament is written in, this gets really flushed out, and it's flushed out in the English here, but faith is a substance. Now, we understand kind of what a substance is, but it is a substance, which means it's something real here and now. Hope essentially looks towards the future, so it's not necessarily a substance. Faith is like actually real. It's a substance. It's like 
metaphysical. It's like it's atomic. It's a substance. That's what the Bible says spiritually. It's something here and now. That's why we say it's in the present. So it's, it's a substance. Now, it's not a material substance, but it's a substance nonetheless that's spiritual. Each is really important to catch this. Each is valid. So it's not saying one is being put down against the other. Neither is a substitute, though, for the other. Now, Romans chapter 10, verse 10, really clearly defines what faith is. It says, for with the heart, man or woman believes resulting in righteousness. So faith, when we use that, when we have that, when we have faith, it, it's what makes us righteous. So faith is a substance, and that substance, what does it say? It's in the heart, we believe. So that, that faith is in your heart. It's not in your head. Just really important to catch. A lot of the, pe theologians, you know, you think, well, faith is theology. That's not what it is at all. It's not intellectual ascension. It's not like, okay, now I know all these things in my mind. It's not the thing that God is looking for in terms of faith. What the Bible says, how it's coming through is faith isn't when you know a bunch of things in your head. It's when you believe that thing, the Bible verse, you believe about Jesus in your heart. Really important to catch this. So the heart is the place, that's exactly what it says. You can't be righteous and just know a bunch of things in your head. So for with the heart, men and women believe resulting in righteousness. That's awesome. So it's not like you gotta have 25 years of training to believe. It's not a series of books you have to necessarily memorize. It's that you believe the things about Jesus in your heart. You believe that, that these things, not in the head, in the heart. So the heart is the place, because that's scriptural, right? The heart is the place we believe with. A lot of people, and this is kind of important to say, have intellectual opinions. Now, that's the problem right now in COVID. Everyone's got opinions and give intellectual assent to doctrine. So it's like some people kind of battle it out right now. You need to believe this. You need to think that. You, that's not what faith's all about. It's really important to realize you've been put here to have faith. You've been put here listening to me right now. So faith in the mind will not do what God promises. So people can tell you, well, you need to this or you need to that. You need to memorize this. You need to memorize that. It's good to have knowledge, but the Bible says knowledge puffs up. But faith in the heart, it's not an intellectual opinion and it's not giving intellectual assent to doctrine. It's, it's not something in the mind that will create God's promises. It's faith in the heart. Now, this is so interesting. So faith is for now. You've got to believe in your heart. Hope is for the future. Faith is in the heart. Hope is in the mind. Important to catch this. Because a lot of people, it's, it's funny how this gets reversed. I would think many people I talk to today, they literally reverse this. They say you got to have hope in your heart and faith in your mind. So they're always like, learn this doctrine or believe this about whatever. That's not what it says in the Bible. It's amazing how that gets you got to counteract that. you got to say, no, faith's in the heart, hope's in the head. You cannot let that switch. So faith relates us to the facts and acts of God. That's essentially what the Bible says in God's word and to God himself. So there's certain facts in the Bible that it's a factual thing, Christianity. Jesus died and was raised from the dead. He was born of the Virgin Mary. That's true. He was buried and he rose again. But you have to believe that. That's the central thing about faith. You have to believe that. It's not belittling hope, but faith is this thing that you believe in your heart. That's really cool. So it's not in your mind. The helmet of hope is in the mind. So it protects us from anxiety, depression, fear, hope, and faith aren't the same thing. It's kind of important to catch this. So there's one scriptural base for all hope. It's Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and it says this. Now catch this. This is critical. It's amazing, this verse. We, for we know that God ca causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and to those who are the called. Catch that, the called according to his purpose. 
So hope, that's what hope is. We know that God comes. We hope in these promises. So hope has a scriptural base. It's not just wishful thinking. It says that faith is the breastplate, hope is the helmet. Put on the helmet of hope. It says this in Ephesians. So these are amazing things that you see. Now, how do these things play out? And I want to look at this for a moment. And this is why when we've, I, I've put this together with my message the last few weeks, this is why enduring is so important. I make that a very long so. If you run away from the calling, and just catch what I said, if you run away from the calling, you lose out on the ability. There's an ability that God is wanting you to endure for. You lose out on something. It's like Jonah when he ran versus... Uh, there's, no, there's no precedence for giving up in the Bible. You have to keep that steady hope in your heart. The second part of the scripture that we just read, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just highlight this. This is so unbelievable to me personally. For, and I'll read it again. Romans 8, 28. I want us to catch this because I think a lot of us, we don't go all the way to the end of this verse when we read it. We know that God causes all things to work together for good. For, the, for those who are called, or sorry, to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. So catch that. There's two parts. A lot of us act together in our heart. We believe in God. We have faith in God. And I'm just celebrating that so many people have held on and you're watching online and come into the parking lot and praising the Lord out in the open outside. Raise your hands. and You're sitting at home in these difficult times. You're tuning in. You're having faith in God. But catch what this says. Because a lot of people are like, God's going to work everything out together for those or for good to those who love God. But it doesn't just say that. It says, we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and who are the called according to his purpose. That's the part to catch. And that's where enduring, this is not sophisticated, but it's incredible when you look at this. So why en enduring is the part that connects you to that second part of the verse? It's to, things work together for the good when you love God and who are the called according to his purpose. So when you're called, David was called. He had a promise from God, you're going to be king of Israel. David, you know, he ran from Saul, but he didn't run away from his calling. Abraham wandered around for 25 years. That's 50 times longer than we've gone through the lockdown and COVID. But he didn't give up on having uh, his son. He held on. He didn't give up on the promise of God. So you want to fix your eyes on the promise and you categorically want to say, I'm called of the Lord. Are you called of the Lord today? Abraham was called to have a son and he was going to be the father of a nation. And he literally held on. He endured based on that promise that God had spoken, that his life was going to matter and that God had something for him to do. Joseph held on. He endured. He didn't give in. Now, this is hope. So there's faith that God has given you this amazing substance. And then there's hope that you're going to dwell in this land, Abraham. You're going to have a son, Abraham. You're going, to, you're going to do all these amazing things. And hope and faith fixed him to do the things that he wanted him, uh, that God wanted him to do. So there's no precedence in the Bible to giving up. You have to endure. And you see that inkling right here that you've got to hold together in what God has for you to do. And that you see that God working everything out for good. And this is so hard. You've got to realize this. Don't let somebody tell you that God will work everything out if you just love God, but you can just forget what God asked you to do. You, God will work it out when you're faithful to both things. Catch that. It's really important to see that. God works things out for good when you're faithful to both things. You love God and you're the called according to his purpose. So it's like, okay, 
God will work it out. If you bail on the second, I'm not sure where that's going to leave you. God's going to kind of prod you. Now, God will always try and help you because he loves you. But it says these, these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. So it's really important these days to counteract any messaging from the enemy that would try and tell you don't trust in God. You know, you can turn the corner and give up on the call or the promises. God wants you to endure. It doesn't mean that you don't love God, but it means that you're the called and God will work out everything for good to those who are both of those things. Really important to see. And God will work them out. So look at your life and you say, Pastor Paul, what do I do? I don't know what to do. I'm waiting. Now this is the carry through. When you're enduring, God knows what's going on. And as you endure, you put your trust in him. You put your trust in what he's spoken to you. And you realize in your mind that faith is in the present, hope is in the future. So how do I make sure that I'm holding on to the substance, the real thing that God has given to me in my heart? For with the heart, we believe resulting in righteousness. You've got to act on that faith that God has put you here and he's putting you in under, thing, under things. You, you, you look at your life and say, I'm under a lot of pressure here, Pastor Paul. So how do I handle it? Well, you, the word endure means that you're holding out under the pressure. That's literally what the word means. You're not running away. You're not giving up. There's no precedence in the New Testament or in the Bible for giving up. God uses those. David ran from Saul but didn't give up and run away. He could have run away and gone far, far away. So you don't give up. You hold out. Can anyone say amen? You're going to hold out. You're going to have that faith in your heart and then the hope that God has for your life, you're going to hold on to in your mind. And that's where we talked about if the book of Ephesians, that you, in your mind, you have this war that's going on. So God's main protection in your mind against fear and against worry. You see, a few weeks ago, we mentioned these scriptures, these steps that you need to take to have hope. The helmet of hope is what it calls it. Ephesians chapter 4 says, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. For God has not given us a spear, a, a, a spear against us that comes from the enemy, a, a, a fiery dart that comes from the enemy. He, God hasn't given you that, that goes in your mind and questions your faith. That is not hope. Where your mind is like, Oh, I need to learn this doctrine, and if I have this figured out, then I'll be a better person. No, you get a hope in your mind, having the Holy Spirit in your mind. God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power of love and a sound mind. There's really important things. You have to believe in your heart in the things of the Lord. It's not about memorizing just a bunch of things in your head, giving intellectual assent. The enemy can throw thoughts in your mind to kind of say, well, you're a bad person, you're this, you're that, the other. But he can also throw thoughts, well, nothing's going to work out. And he brings these seeds of doubt. That's the pattern the enemy does. Remember what he did to Adam and Eve. That's how he does it. He questions. So you got to put the helmet of hope, the power of the Holy Spirit in your mind. God gives you a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7, Paul contrasts the kind of spirit operating in the people of the world versus says the spirit that is the child of God. God gives you power, love, and a sound mind. And then we see Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends understanding, will guard your heart. And then dwell on the things that are good. So you look at the scripture and it gives you a way and the enemy, it's interesting, he switches these things. That is a classic technique that the devil does. And don't let him do it to you. Where he says, no, you got to have faith in your mind, hope in your head. It's strange how that happens. But it's really important to see that because people get really frustrated when they do that. Because faith is in the heart, hope is in the head. And you need the power of the Holy Spirit in your mind. And you need faith in your heart. Can anyone say amen?
Now, if you look at the people of the scripture that we've looked at, you look at David and you endure and you hold on to the promises that God has put before you. What are the things that God has put before you? I, you know, you look at the day and age in which we live. People get so mad in COVID. Well, I can't do what I used to do. And I've had to really come to terms with things like if, if, this, if there's a law and I got to do the law, you think that God can't work around this stuff? And I'm really finding it's important for me. The Bible says uh, God works everything out for good for those, what does it say? Who love God. And, and are faithful in that calling of the Lord. So as long as I remain faithful to those two things, isn't that amazing? I will find that God works these things out together for me. No matter what I gotta do in COVID, if I'm faithful to those things, God will work those my life out together for good. Preaching in the parking lot, I've noticed, it's not necessarily what I would have anticipated doing, but if I, if I have, have in my heart that remembrance of Romans 8, 28, for we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. Even if I have to do things different, I don't want to get too upset about it because God can still work. God will work it out for good. And I've seen that at work in the parking lot, even in the community, people driving by, you guys are doing church outside. It has opened up so many conversations and encouraging people even in the neighborhoods. So God can use us and God will work it out and don't take the scripture and think that doesn't happen because it does. You see, it's not our job to get mad and to challenge everybody. We gotta do our part. We don't renounce Jesus, but God will work it out. And will he work it out for you? So God always is faithful and God will come through. I counteract in the name of Jesus as we close today. Everything, every word and work of the enemy that has come against the people of God that are listening, to me right now. Everyone that thinks that God can't handle what's happening in the world right now, God can handle what's happening in the world right now. And the only way we're going to get out of all this trouble is to give these things to God. God, you can handle. I make that proclamation right now. God can handle what's happening in the world right now. And God, when I love you and I am the called according to your purpose, you will work it out for good when I endure. You can handle this. God, we make a proclamation over every person. I pray that your, your spirit would move into every person to give them a sound mind. Correct it when the enemy tries to move us from having faith in the heart to saying we need to just think in the head. We can't outthink what's going on in the world right now, but God, you can handle this. We make that proclamation. Lord, where the, wor the, the world that we're in is so out of control, we just know, Jesus, speak the words, peace be still in our lives, and the storm will be calm. But God, we have to be faithful to your word. And Lord, give everyone a grounding in your word so they can size up what's going on in their life and the world right now, and that you can bring peace into their mind. And Lord, you can calm the storm. We need you, God. This world needs you. You're the only way, God, the only thing that can handle what's going on in the world right now is you. And we ask, Lord, that you would intervene in the lives of people in our, our church and even for the world right now, we pray, Lord, that you would break the power of the enemy. In Jesus' name, restore what the locust is eating. And God, break every attack in people's lives. The enemy is been up to no good. We rebuke everything that's a work of the enemy over our hearts and our minds. Bring peace. We're going to make it in Jesus' name. And God, bring us back to all that you have to us. Lord, for you are faithful to fulfill your promises. Release your peace and your power in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you today.